In this video I'll be showing you how I installed a front receiver hitch. This hitch comes out right there in front of the uh, front of the bumper uh, behind the license plate. You can get these from the store that mount way down here at the bottom but then again you're losing all this clearance whatever accessory you have is sitting way down low I wanted it up and out of the way. Let's get this bumper removed. I'll start underneath here. So these are the fog lights. Just undo that wire, undo the little clip there, and that nut right there, that's what we have to remove. And that's pretty much it for underneath here. All right, next thing I'll do is I'll pop the license plate holder off. Yeah, that one's real simple. Just these little tabs hold it in place, bend them out of the way and it comes out. All right, now we gotta unsnap these guys here. Picked up some of these uh, plastic pieces. It was a whole set. Uh, horrible freight, but 10 bucks. Works well. Well, it'll work out great. A lot of these fasteners stayed in place, but we'll take care of it. All right, next part here, we gotta get the other bolts. This is underneath the cover. There's two bolts here, <clears throat> two on each side, and the bumper should come off completely. I'm gonna try something here, see if this maybe helps with me uh, with alignment. Get this paint marker. I'm just gonna put a little mark around these. So then when we're putting everything back together, same thing here, same 21 millimeter, I'll break them loose and get the rest of it away with the impact. All right, that's the bumper. Let's uh, get the crash bar out of the way. We need to get this plastic piece out of the way. Let's see if we can get that out. There's a 10 millimeter here. Let's see, we got a couple more here. Something super small, seven millimeter. What is this for anyways? Does anybody know? What the heck does this thing do? Take this thing out the way for now. Alright, so this might be a little interesting here. That's the crash bar that's in front of the wheel. And over here are the two, two bolts that we have to remove. Now, there's very little clearance between here and here. Uh, let's see, we'll pull these out, and see what we can do. And just like we predicted, not enough room. All right, we got this body mount here. We need to uh, remove the whole bolt that goes all the way through.
Whew. It's almost like they don't want you taking it out. <laughs> All right, so we got this rubber bushing out. Grab the uh, metal part here with some pliers, just pulled it down, and then, and then it just came out this way here. spinning and uh, keep them in one place. Here we are. All right, so that's the two we cut and drilled and tapped. That one here, I made a little mark right at four and a half inches. Uh, this is on the bottom. So when I slide this thing into the frame, we can center up that mark. We, we still have to drill and tap two holes. Only thing they do is they're going to lock this tube into the frame just to keep it from moving around and wiggling. Looking down here, got everything centered over. Here's our little marks, they're about the same here. So this is pretty much ready. The thing I'm gonna do is I wanna, it's, it's in here, but I wanna just put some kind of a mechanical fastener to keep the thing from moving at all. So there's your holes here. I'm just gonna drill a hole straight through, straight to there, and just run a tap through it. I was gonna, uh, remove the whole brace before tapping it, but uh, after seeing how much effort it took to <laughs> install it initially, I'm just gonna drill these out and uh, tap them in place. Might need to get a little tap extension or a longer tap, but uh, we should make it work. Let's see what I got in the toolbox. So this piece of two by three, that's what's going to go inside the frame. We'll slide it over one end. Uh, we'll have to take the bumper off and some other things off, but that's going to get slid in those holes and secured on top of that We'll build this piece of uh, iron angle iron here That'll work bolt pattern on top. I'll uh, Hit him with a center punch drill them out and then we'll uh, flip it to the front here Here's our cross member. Here's the piece we were just working on. We'll center this up and then we'll transfer our marks. I'll use that uh, same drill bit we drilled uh, this plate with to mark the centers of our holes. And 
All right, so we're pretty much done with this piece for now. Set it off to the side. We'll uh, drill and tap all these holes. We'll move along. All right, here's our final cap, 3816. Uh, put a little WD-40 on this guy. Just make sure you're straight up and down in each direction as best as you can. And when you feel it you get a good bite, go back just a little bit, break that chip, then go forward and back. And repeat the process a couple hundred times and we'll be done. All right, so this part's done. Everything bolts up nice. We'll torque these down to about 45 foot-pounds. That's uh, facing the front, by the way. And then this receiver tube is gonna go way out here. It's gonna have to be uh, pretty much right there. So it's gonna stick out quite a bit to the front uh, to get our length. Now I'll throw some gussets on there to help support everything. Give it uh, a little bit of twist prevention. Man, did I get lucky. I just happen to have this really long tap laying in my toolbox. I bought these flange bolts to go in through here, just so that way it's in. It'll be solid, it's a grade eight bolt. It'll keep anything from sliding around. All right, so I'm just gonna drill and tap everything the same size, as you can see. Those are the holes, that's where the skid plate mounts to. So right in here you can see the bottom, that's the uh, underneath portion of the uh, cross member, that's this guy here. I'm just gonna drill through that, try to get it in the middle there, drill through our cross brace there, and tap everything, run that bolt, snug it up real good. This last guy in, it will be done, at least on this half. We'll do it again on the other. That's not going anywhere. Okay, so we're all bolted up here. There's that last, how do I do this? Here we go. There's that last uh, bolt we just put in. That's holding this whole, I'm just gonna call this a cross member. This whole cross member's very solid. It is definitely not going anywhere. And if it, if it, <laughs> if it ever has to be removed, hopefully not by me, I feel so very sorry for the Poor soul having to do that. All right, so we still get good access here to the oil filter, no big deal. Plenty of room to work on anything on the front of the engine here. Uh, we only lost a little bit of height here, but that's okay. That's just exactly 
where our project's going in today. All right, I'm gonna repeat the same side. You don't need to see me struggle. And then we'll come back, look at the top. All right, so I've removed our little spacer. The body came back down where it belongs. I'm just gonna put this back in here. And this actually slides in. The little piece of metal that was giving me a hard time earlier. That's what keeps this thing up, keeps it from just falling out. Now the crash bar goes back in place. That just slides in here. It's got a nice little stop here, keeps it from going out. What I'll do is the, I'm gonna leave these welded nuts in place. I'll just drill out this hole, uh, size or two bigger. I'll take a grade eight bolt and I'll stick it in from the bottom and I'll have another grade eight nut and washer on top. So that way it's serviceable. The bolts will drop out of the bottom instead of having to come through the top like we did here. Well, yeah, she's done for. All right, with that out of the way, let's put the crash bar in. I probably don't need it here, but since I've got it, I'm gonna put just, oops, a little bit too much there. <laughs> But I'll put just a little bit of Loctite on there, how about that? <laughs> Along with these grade 8 bolts, I got these uh, grade 8 flange nuts. Alright, that's better. This way if anybody ever has to come back behind me, or if I have to come back behind myself, I can actually get to this. Good and solid. Now let's get to the point why we're actually here. Cross members installed, nice and solid, drilled secured. We've got our holes here. We've got this plate we made that's going to get screwed into here. I'll uh, put a couple bolts, hold it in place. The receiver tube's going to mount like this, except I want the tube to go all the way in. We've got a little clearance issue here. What I'm going to do is cut the tube here I'm just gonna notch the bottom of it out uh, to this depth we'll weld it in place we'll tack it at first put the bumper back on see where it fits make sure it fits exactly where we want it to once everything's good we'll burn it in final get some good gussets going weld everything up nice and solid and we'll be done so while we're mocking this up I'm gonna put just a few of these bolts in I do want it sitting here, right that center. That looks pretty good. All right, so I got the bumper back installed. Tell you what, it's a bit of a pain doing it yourself. You can get a buddy to help you out. But the way I did it, you put these bolts on loosely, just enough so the bumper can slide around a little bit. Uh, don't forget the one on the back. So do the one in the back and one of these on the front so you can move it just a little bit. Now I tried both ways, I tried bracing it here with my knee, but what ended up working the best is I just grabbed here, lifted up as far as I could, and with my other hand I snugged up one of these bolts, or one of those nuts actually, it came out pretty good. So I'll tell you, marking uh, the paint there, don't even bother, no help. Alright, I like it. It'll fit nice and nice and good there. Weld everything up. Got plenty of clearance in case there's any movement, body flex, anything like that. Gives plenty of room there. All right, I'll take this back off, get everything centered, and we will uh, tack weld this in place. Okay, let's see how that fits. Right, 
just throw a couple bolts in there see how everything lines up okay so I'm pretty happy with that that's about centered that looks good that'll work just fine okay we have just a little bit of a gap Oop, right there so we got enough room between our receiver and the body cross member we've got just a little bit of room that's perfect in case there's any kind of flex or movement it won't hit that part right there everything still lines up well I'll go ahead and burn this in today is tomorrow I made a trip to the scrapyard got some metal pieces cut them up ground them so that'll go like this Made a couple more for the bottom it'll go in like that I'll burn them in If you want to learn how to weld, check out uh, Jody at Welding Tips and Tricks, something like that. I'm just going to make it stick together. Okay, I'm not gonna win any awards here, but uh, yeah, it's a little sketchy there. It'll be all right. Let this cool off, put a little paint, throw it in the truck. Paint dried up. It'll hopefully keep you from getting any rust on it. So everything looks like after the fact. Let's go put it in the truck. Okay, our piece is installed. Got all the bolts installed. A little bit of Loctite on each one. And it's set. Now we'll put the bumper covers on. Okay, with the mock-up complete, that's what it looks like from the inside here. I'll just use my trusty paint marker. Alright, for that we'll just use one of these oscillating multi-tools. These things are awesome. I've only had it for a year and I don't know how I lived without it. So I'll clean it up just a little bit more, make it nice and pretty. Well, that's basically going to be the opening there. Okay, that's what it looks like without the license plate cover. To insert your accessory up here, I've already unsnapped the back tabs of the license plate holder. This just comes off. And there's our receiver. Pop this winch in there. I'll 
come from the back, insert her pin. <coughs> our winch is in. So it sits off the bumper just a little bit, just enough for the wires. Good clearance there. It'll only be there when I need it. When I don't need it, it'll be tucked away. For people that live in states that have front license plates, I've seen people get these, uh, they clip on a fairly, basically, and I hold the license plate in place. Okay, this one's a little bit big, but there's another option. Get one of those baskets and hit For this demonstration, we just parked this thing in the mud a little bit. Pull out the winch for the first time. Grab my buddy's Hummer over there. Just give the winch a little bit of move. All right, let's try. Let's try this. It'll be faster. Oh yes. Made a small modification to my front hitch since originally installing it. I added this device here. This is uh, the pin keeper. So you got your pin that comes out here, it goes in the middle, and then I put a spring returned. Uh, then it comes here. I got a vernier cable. Made this little bracket that bolts up to the front here. Then it routes through the body there. So now with the pull of this vernier cable, and then uh, do the fine adjust here. If you can't get a good enough pull, you can bring this pin in and out easy without having to get under the truck. Whenever your front hitch, whatever you got here is plugged in, it closes nicely, engages. You want to get a cotter put in there, there's still room. But this cable puts a little bit of tension, keep the thing from sliding out. Standard YouTube disclosure. This is my project, my truck, this is how I did it. You do what you want, don't hold me responsible. I'm not a professional welder, I'm not a licensed engineer. I just figured this out in my driveway with minimal tools that I have laying around. <laughs>